the casino where the rules get changed against you. There's a good chance you've heard of the website Reddit. It's an online forum where users can join communities based on their interests like sports, video gaming, gardening, or even investing. And one of these investing communities on Reddit has blown up in a big way. In fact, in the last 24 hours, over 600,000 subscribers joined. It's named Wall Street Bets. This Reddit community is not a source of sage financial wisdom. It's notorious for its YOLO bets, such as buying out of the money call option days before expiry in the hopes of hitting it big. Wall Street Bets was once the haunt of investment industry professionals looking for a place to relax and joke with like-minded people. For a time, even personas like the currently imprisoned former hedge fund manager Martin Shkreli would visit to shoot the breeze. In recent years, however, and especially since the COVID pandemic, the forum has taken on a new life of its own as novice investors chasing the thrill of quick gains during the downturn piled on. Now, the fastest growing community on Reddit, these new investors have taken some of the advice offered by Wall Street Bets and acted on it. The most famous example, and one that's gained massive traction this week, is GameStop. GME is the ticker symbol. The chart you're looking at right now is its year to date, that's the blue line, and then the volume is in the orange bars. What caused this insane run up in GME share price and trading volume, you ask? Was it some explosive news release or company results? Did they get a buyout offer? The answer is much more absurd than you'd think. The beginning of GME's massive run began over a year ago in September 2019, when a Reddit user named Deep F blank Value decided to post their YOLO options play on the GME to the community. With starting capital of just 53 grand, this individual decided to take a long position on GME by purchasing call options. At this time, GME stock was just worth about $4.50 a share. Deep F value cited their reasons for making the trade as including, and I quote, the fact that it's worth quite a bit more than $8 a share and there are numerous catalysts that could trigger a reversion to fair value over the next 18 months. Reactions from the community were mixed. After all, GME was a brick and mortar retail video game storefront whose performance was sagging in the face of increasing competition from digital video games, not to mention that it was a pandemic and most of the stores were at malls that you know nobody was going to, but with most of their sales growth coming from their collectible segment as opposed to their core video game business, some were convinced that GME would soon be going the way of the dinosaurs, much as how the video rental stores did before. Over the next year, however, deep F value would staunchly continue to remain long even as the company traded sideways and continued to post monthly updates to the Wall Street's bed subreddit community. The company slowly trended back up and around the anniversary of their first post, Deep F Value would report back with nearly a million dollars in gain. Even at this point, reactions were still mixed, with many applauding Deep F Value's commitment, but also many telling them to cash out their position. Naked shorts and the evolution of Occupy Wall Street. Others wondered just how such gains could be realized from a stock. Had Deep F Value closed their position out at this point, this would have ended as just another footnote in Wall Street Bet's history of YOLO option trades. But instead, and much like the Bitcoin diehards, they continued to hold their position and the share price continued to slowly trend upwards. There was a brief hiccup early last December when shares dropped almost 20% following a bad quarterly performance but share price steadily crept up until hitting $20 on January 11th. On that day, GameStop appointed the founder of online pet supply retailer, Chewy.com, Ryan Cohen, plus two other e-commerce veterans to its board to focus on growing its own digital sales segment. Sounds like a positive catalyst. This was considered to be a good sign for the stock as it was trying to evolve its business model in an effort to stay competitive. At this point, Deep F Value churned their $53 worth of out-of-the-money options in the GME call options into $3.2 million. And Wall Street Bets, now having nearly 2 million subscribers and also having seen over a year of monthly and sometimes weekly updates from this user, was now very familiar with GME, as you can see the charts here in the progress. However, even despite this continual growth in GME's share price, the short interest 
in essence, the amount of people who were betting short, selling the stock because they thought it would go down, stayed strong on the stock. Now, quick, you can quickly Google what short attacks are, but essentially the, these people believe that the stock will go down, so they sell it today without owning it with the intent of buying it down the road when it's at a cheaper price. In fact, there were more short sold shares of GME than there were actual shares of GME. Now, this is where the regulators need to get some common sense. How can you sell short 140%? That's 40% more shares than are outstanding. So AOC and all the regulators and everyone listening to this, there's no way you could do this on the upside, but on the downside, you're allowed. This caused by a phenomenon known as naked short selling, where shares that don't actually exist are sold on the market. Usually when short selling, the shares must first be borrowed from someone who owns the stock. When naked short selling happen, firms are selling shares without first ensuring their stock they can borrow to cover their short positions. Now I've written extensively about short positions over the last five years. Please visit my website and your shares at your brokerage firm are most likely being lent out to companies that are shorting the stock that you own and your brokerage firm is clipping fees off of both of you. Therefore, you are allowed to notify your brokerage firm that you do not want your shares lent out to shorters. Now think about this. The brokerage firm lends out your shares to other people and does not even pay you any of the rent or the borrowing fee. They keep 100% of it. Bet you your brokerage firm doesn't tell you that. So while naked short selling is illegal in practice, Thanks to loopholes and the rules and poor regulatory oversight, naked short selling still happens in the industry. Here's where the history gets made. GME had the highest short interest of any stock in North America, which some of the savvier members of Wall Street Bets were quick to point out. Some began speculating that a short squeeze where a rapid price run up would occur due to short sellers trying to cover their short positions would soon occur. Members of Wall Street Bets pounced. This truly is a story of David versus Goliath, but many, many, many Davids combined together to take down Goliath. And the rest is history. Game stock going to the moon. Just two days after GME's positive news on the 11th of January, GME share price began climbing rapidly, first from $20 to $30, then to $40, then to $65 a share. It wasn't until this week, when January 26th, when the floodgates broke open and prices were rapidly driven up to the combination of Wall Street, bets, hype fuel buying, and funds scrambling to cover their short positions. As the time of this writing, GME shares had settled at about $347 per share, a remarkable 685% increase year to date in four weeks. What about the short sellers, you ask? The head funds who thought that GameStop stock was going to drop instead? Well, on Wednesday, January 27th, two of the major short sellers at GME, Melvin Capital and Citroen Research, were forced to cover their short positions at massive losses, or at least that's what we're told. On the other hand, the numerous posts of Wall Street bets abound telling of novice investors who were able to pay off medical bills, accelerate their saving accounts, or pay down mortgages thanks to their GME positions. In the midst of all this, hedge fund Melvin Capital desperately saw a cash infusion to help cover the losses from their now underwater short positions. So in came fellow hedge fund Citadel and 0.72 Asset Management, who pledged about $2 billion and $750 million respectively in exchange for non-controlling revenue shares in the firm. But wait, Citadel? Why does that name sound familiar? Wait a minute. The dark side of the moon. So far, the sentiment in Wall Street bets has been the little guy sticking it to the Wall Street. But Wall Street just shoved it up. The general vibe seems to feel as if retail investors have won a victory over the big hedge funds who have turned the markets into cash cows to milk at their own convenience. However, there's another side to the story. If you recall our previous article on Robinhood, which is linked here below, the favorite discount trading platform, Wall Street Bets, and novice investors everywhere, Robinhood doesn't actually handle their own order flow. Instead, Robinhood sends their orders to a number of market maker firms who execute those trades on their behalf. And the lead recipient of Robinhood's order flow who gets over half of all Robinhood trades, you got it, Citadel Securities part of Citadel LLC, group of companies, the same one that just bailed out the shorting company, Melvin Capital, in exchange for a revenue share. Pretty smart guys. They're on both sides of the street. 
For a quick refresher, this order flow from Robinhood allows Citadel to front run client orders by placing their own trades ahead of Robinhood users. And it also allows them to take the other side of the trade when it's profitable for them. In other words, Citadel was handed information that Wall Street Bets readers were looking to profit from a short squeeze on GME on a silver platter. And they didn't know that just because it had become a hot topic on Reddit. They knew it because they could actually see the order flow and dollar volume going through their way. From there, it wouldn't take much to connect the dots and see who would stand to lose the most from these orders. Hedge funds with significant short positions like Melvin Capital. Melvin well, Capital is not some sort of mismanaged failure of a fund. Since its inception in late 2014, Melvin Capital has been one of Wall Street's best performing firms. It's grown from $1 billion in AUM assets under management from the start to over $20 billion prior to the GME run-up and delivered over 50% returns to clients last year, even after fees. Very impressive. So when you think about Citadel being able to swoop in and purchase a revenue share of a historically strong performing fund like Melvin Capital for bargain bin prices, you have to wonder. How early were these able to see the writing on the wall? Did they even accelerate the process themselves? Even when Wall Street loses, Wall Street still manages to win. Today, on January 28th, investors in Robinhood were prevented, and from other brokerage firms that they had, from buying their position. But yet, these funds were allowed to continue to short. Now, look, I am no conspiracy theory, but if you're going to tie up David to let Goliath pound him, that's not a fair fight. If anything, this is going to piss off the retail people even more. Of course, I'm not trying to make light of what retail investors and Wall Street bets have managed to accomplish. Though Wall Street still stands to profit the most from the whole debacle, countless retail investors have walked away with gains as well, but many more are sitting with their accounts not able to trade the stock and have took a punishing loss on Thursday, January 28th. And even just one month ago, the idea of retail investors being able to take down Wall Street hedge funds would have been unthinkable. Melvin Capital and Citron Research will survive, of course. Rumors of them having to declare bankruptcy, I think, are greatly exaggerated. Melvin still plans on taking in another $1 billion in new money next month. And the Citron managing partner, Andrew Left, said on Wednesday, January the 27th, we'll become more judicious when it comes to shorting stocks. Doesn't mean the industry is dead, but it just means you have to be more specific. This wave of investment euphoria has begun to spill over to other targets. Trading was halted in BlackBerry. Hey, that's a Canadian company. And AMC Entertainment. God, doesn't it feel like we're in 2002? BlackBerry and AMC are being talked about. Well, if you halt these shares, Wall Street members began to turn to other heavily shorted stocks and try to replicate their success with GME. Please be careful. There's even been a call to action on the silver markets to squeeze the silver shorts in order to trigger a new silver bull market. For those who don't know me, I have a lot of experience in the resource sector and I am one of the largest financiers in the sector. Now, I can't deny that many people out there have made tremendous gains in GME. 685% return in just four weeks is the stuff of legend. But I also have to offer up a word of caution for those of you who find yourselves getting caught up in this hype. Even though fundamental valuation has got out the window in this past while, I still have to say this, GameStop's business is not worth 347, not by any metric. Fundamental valuation gone by the wayside and even technical analysis breaking down. That means the forces driving GME's meteoric rise are purely based on investor sentiment and momentum. And we just saw on January 28th, what the brokerage firms can do to that momentum by restricting the retail people from trading their own stock. GME is only worth as much as it is because the people buying it believe it's worth that much. And it dropped over 30% in one day when certain people were restricted from buying. That's the core of how markets really work. People buy what they think is going up and sell what they think is going down. Lessons in the next phase. This saga will continue. This has unleashed incredible inspiration to the retail crowd of what they can do, and they are not going away. It's the establishment versus the rebels. But no matter how things end up, there are two lessons to take away from this. Retail investors are a serious force for change in the investment industry. They've proven that they can move the market in big ways, even to the detriment of multi-billion dollar hedge funds. Wall Street's bets has managed to accomplish what I've been trying to do with my own publication. Katusa's resource opportunities put power in the hands of retail investors, and the Katusa Alligator Army has changed the landscape of how money is raised with the, some of the largest financings ever done in the resource sector. 
Do your own due diligence. I can't stress this enough. Don't rely on other people. And if you do rely on them, make sure they are a verified source that don't have any ulterior motives. Understand what you're investing in and why before you commit your money. While GME was a win, the win of a lifetime for many, there are many would-be investors who would have been burned by Wall Streets in the past as well, especially when it comes to options. Even Deep F Value, the person who kicked off GME's rise to prominence, had an investment thesis when they first entered into their long position all those many months ago. I've personally taken on short sellers before, and it's a vicious war. I've written about this over the last four years, and they play not with their own money. Remember, they are managing other people's money. I manage my money, and taking on shorts is very, very hard, and it's a risky game. And the regulator should be regulating the shorts, which they don't, but they need to. Now, back when I took on these shorts, my group wasn't nearly as big as it is today, but it gets very messy. And the game is armed with regulation, naked shorts, and all sorts of tools that funds and brokerages can use against you, the retail investor. At the end of the day, educate yourself and stay safe both health-wise and financial. Stay well.